Okay, guys, uh, today is the 15th of September, 2021, Wednesday, and is U.S. inflation getting controlled? All right, that means that, it, 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 is it trying to tell us that what happened last night in the CPI data, does it mean that the market has really stabilized right now? Is inflation getting controlled? Is it because that now inflation is no longer a, pro a problem? Well, what do you think, guys? For those who are with me right now in the morning, what do you think? Is the inflation in the U.S. market um, being controlled, in your opinion? How are, how are you guys? Let me know your take right now in the uh, Zoom group chat. Okay, I mean, sorry, in the Facebook uh, comment box. All right, let me know what's your take on this. Now, I was asked, I was outside last night having my dinner with a couple of friends and they were telling, asking me when they saw the data and immediately the Dow Jones recover and asking me, what do I feel? I say that, uh, well, it's 5.4% expected and came out 5.3% of 0.1 different. So I'm not too sure how does you detect 0.1 different will be a big, better data, honestly, right? The data is definitely better, but to be a different of 0.1, uh, well, when the main figure is five, I cannot relate. So that's the reason why I was telling my friends, look, if you're long the market, just take some profit first, because I don't think this will continue. And uh, truth be told, by about by the second hour itself, when the cash market opens, things have to change. And of course, you, you saw that the Dow Jones pulled back from there on. All right. So let's take a look over here. Remember that I wrote this figure 34,533. Do you remember that? That I wrote this figure 34,533. All right. For those who remember, T R E M. All right. So if you remember that I, I said this on the 13th of September, today's 15th of September, right? I wrote it there and I say that most likely the market will hit this point and then there might be a temporary rebound. And only if the market loses 34,533, then the market may come down to 34,158. And that was two days ago, technical analysis. And of course, that was where I mentioned, okay? And what happened yesterday? Oh my God, the Dow Jones really came down all the way beautifully and hit 34,533. And amazingly, it rebounded from there. Oh my God. It really rebounded from there. And again, this shows the power of the TWB system. You know, the point is this. We all know that 34,113 is the pivot tube. We also know that 34,533 is the KCB level. And we also know that the KSI was red color the last three days. Hence, therefore, if the market couldn't stay above the pivot one after triggering it, any CCYR should bring it down. And it all really happened. Thank you, Toming and Jerry, who remembers that. I mean, this is really amazing. That is the reason why I really feel that we have a very powerful system. We just have to utilize it well. That's my point. Okay. All right. Nonetheless, it's all right. We, I also shared with you yesterday that the U.S. casino stock will be hit. Well, apparently it happened. This morning, the CNBC shows that the U.S. casino stock fall with jitters over the Macau uh, regulation. All right. Apparently, it's our Macau now. It's obviously under... Uh, under this China jurisdiction and the, there's some form of uh, what they call regulation on them right now and immediately, all right, straight away, we have this, okay, Mark all right, okay, so that is the reason why and all these tells, and this is all like what I shared yesterday, I said that the casinos thought we hit and to be told, they were hit every for 10 to 5% yesterday, oh my God, really. All right, so every morning I will try to give you a little joke of a cartoon and I try to get it something nearer to the financial market. And some of you like it very much because it really tells you a lot of great stuff. Some of you say, uh, Kel, actually I actually don't understand what's going on over here. Well, it is basically using sarcasm to actually tell you how the stock market really, really works. Now, let's take a look at this cartoon. Do you have any investment tips for me? You're asking the right person. I can teach you how to time the market, catch the falling nine, invest in a dead cat bounce. That's my system, okay? All right. Then what's about diversification? I don't invest in anything that anything that I can't spell. <laughs> All right, really, this is quite cool though. Also, it's a very rough in it and trying to just make fun of the financial market. And if you can actually follow the last few days when we're sharing this, you can actually know that the financial market is really a very complicated market whereby it constructed to basically give hell to retail traders and investors. So you really need to know exactly how to play with these boys 
so that you can actually come out tops uh, with them. All right, that's how it looks like. Okay, all right. So anyway, if you understand this, it'll be good. If you can't, it's okay. Anyway, let me go simpler for you. Disclaimer as usual. All right, make sure that uh, you read the above, you accepted the above, and you identify me. All right, thanks. So what we saw is this, I purposely um, opened up the two stars uh, rating to show you the core CPI data, the core CPI month-to-month -month data, and to show you the core CPI, you know, data, is, uh, the CPI data. So we saw was the figure is like, you know, the market was looking at this and the number come out 0.3%, so slightly lower than 0.4, and the market likes it. And of course, that was what initially happened, okay? But today we will have our crude oil inventories and you can see crude oil inventories since um, May, since May uh, 2021, the inventories have been negative. So that means that there are kind of like lesser and lesser supply. And if the supply is not there and demand is there, prices goes up. So that's the reason why you can see crude oil prices actually went up. Let me just show it to you a very simple idea. Uh, quick one on the chart wise, you can see that instantly. Okay, I bring the chart in a little bit fast today. Just to show it to you, how does this really work? Corner. Okay. You, you can see over here that um, May, this is May the 21st, I'm um, sorry, uh, around May, May period. This is May period. Can you see that? You can actually see from the screen right now. Let me just put my drawing up. Okay. This is May when the inventories hit the low end and after it's been staying low all the way. And you can see that the crude oil also went up during this period of time. Okay, of course in um, this uh, July period, you notice that the inventories go up a little bit and that's why crude oil came down also, all right? But after that, when you go back to negative again, the crude oil price recovers. So you can see that that is a also like a demand supply relationship between them, huh? okay? So you got an idea, okay. So my boy is this, if you actually watch what I share on Super Tuesday yesterday, I also, I already tell you that my personal thing is that crude oil should be able to go to $75 to $80 by end of this year. And I did mention three stocks or four stocks for you to take note in the market so that you can actually take advantage. If you miss that session, go to our TWB revision, revision group. You should be able to actually, um, uh, what do you call, uh, watch the replay, okay? All right. Now, this is the Dow Jones last night. So the Dow Jones initially during cash market open, it went up. And then after that, the selling came very strongly down 350 points on high. Now, the thing is, I don't like touch the chart because a chart that behaves in this manner actually means distribution. That means someone is trying to sell, push a market up first and after that, they sell the market down because that is where the volume is. Because when the market is still bullish, the market players will love to chase up the stocks, right? And if the stock is being pumped up initially, more people will queue at the bottom price. And when more people queue at the bottom price, the volume, the abundance of volume is there. So when I saw the volume at the bottom, we know that there's a lot of buyers coming in. The boys will take this time, this opportunity to sell them as hard and fast as possible. And then after that, as well, right, I can get out my position with the minimum downside or difference. Do you understand what I say? If you understand what I just say, please key yes, Y-E-S. All right, this is whereby is what we call as a pump and a dump. And the main idea is to basically create a lot of abundant volume at the bottom so that the boys can distribute without, you know, too much of a difference in prices. All right, if you can understand what I just say, please key Y-E-S. Yes, okay. So let's just uh, look at the Dow Jones. The Dow shades 290 points and S&P closed lower despite the cooler than expected inflation reading. Now, again, I repeat myself. Yes, the number is slightly lower than expectation, but I cannot understand that how much is it different because of just 0.1%. Seriously. Okay, thank you, Judy and Jerry, who actually uh, commend that. Okay, so what happened, you can see right now, um, the market giving up gains earlier in the session after a better than feared inflation reading and falling back into their September doldrum, right? So what I try to say is this, the market was in a gain position. And then after that, it's all right. And it was because it's a better than a fear inflation is so a good thingy, but the market fell back. So the thing is that uh, I, I, I can't see the, how it being 
translate equals to because the data was good, that's why they buy up. In fact, in fact, this is more like a fake move, in fact, in my opinion. So um, I'll talk about this more on the, the, the consumer price index later, but my main gist is to look at this as the Dow Jones the last two days. So initially the Dow Jones was down, then after that they pump it up, okay? They pump it up all the way to close it strong. Then yesterday they move it higher. Before you know that, well, with a lesser time period, they sell it down faster. So this is a very typical sign of distribution that accumulation. And of course, uh, now they are looking for more fundamentals to support the market. And obviously there's also little, little negative news come out like Apple, it closed 1% lower after even the, the review, the iPhone 13. But the iPhone 13, if you actually look at it, it's just only add on a bit stuff, but it didn't really put in the punch. So that's why Apple shares also came off. So let's just revisit what happened yesterday on the chart. So we have to do a big, quick recap. Now the Dow opens here on uh, yesterday's market, but the KSI was very clear. It was already red in color. So very clearly, we need to look for selling opportunity. Now, of course, initially the price did go up above OP, we can buy. But once the market goes below OP, CCYR will be a definite sell because the market KSI is red. And of course, you can see that there was upsurge of the uh, sell, vol sell activity. And of course, when the price comes down, right, you can actually guess that it may actually go down to pivot two, and which really, really happened. And of course, the 34,533, that was my technical level that I mentioned, really, really spot on, okay? Really, really spot on. To the point that, wow, it just, you know, if the, after it hit, it actually recovered. So let's review what happened yesterday in more detail. All right, so basically the Dow Jones was just hanging around the opening price as usual. Then after that, it went below OP, below pivot one, okay? That's where the color change came in and the Dow came down. But after that, you can see that this is the BMB of the day. Yes, it was a BMB, but there was no trigger. It was a BMB and the price goes up. But when it went up itself, you notice that it got resisted exactly at the people one. No, that again shows you that the market really recognized our people one, even though that this people one were already there at 6 a.m. in the morning. Then what happened? The price came back down, came back down. So it's a center CCYR over here. So it's a sell order. Remember KSI is red in color. Then it, again, it didn't get to hit the KTR minus one and very fast it rebounded during the cash mark when, when the CPI data came out. So of course, when the CPI data came out, it's above OP, above people one, buy right, it's a buy right here, buy right, huh? it's a buy. But because the KSI is red in color, if you buy, you must reduce your size. But before you can uh, say upside another half an hour to an hour or so, suddenly the market U-turn, you can see very clearly this guy is also a BMB. This guy is a CCYR. This guy trigger pivot one. This guy trigger OP. So basically, this three few reason this is a sell. And of course, it was a flat top uh, 15 minute. So it's a sell. And of course, if you sold it, the price really collapsed all the way down. And obviously, it really come down to the pivot two level, which we really don't know why it stopped there and recovered. So all these things tells you that, you know, our system, as long as you follow, you can gen generally make money. Okay, this is very, very important. Okay, traders, please take note of that. All right, okay, so pretty cool, right? Very clear uh, stuff that I share. Okay, let's continue. Look at the gold market. Now gold basically uh, got interesting. Now gold, okay, you see them. Huh? The problem is, is that if this inflation will naturally leads to there's a potential of tapering, hence therefore dollar is expected to go higher. So if dollar goes higher, okay, then the gold will come down. So that's why gold initially came down. But the problem is that yesterday there's no inflation, so-called. So no inflation, the dollar should likely will go down. And then because the dollar goes down, the goal went up, <laughs> okay? So that is how it happened yesterday. So the opening price of gold was around pivot one. The KSI was very clearly red. The blue bar were all there. So naturally is that the market should go down. Well, gold did came down, but it just means the pivot two by a fraction and then recover. And of course, as you know, if the market is above OP and above pivot one, no matter how CCRY will be a buying, but just that you can go smaller quantity. But buy is an absolute yes, okay? So what happened? Let's take a look. 
Okay, you can see that um, the market ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. And beautifully, you can see that it triggered the pivot one beautifully and break below OP. So by right, this is where you can short gold. And if you follow through and you shorted gold, gold really came down all the way nicely until the KTR minus one level. Now, what is crazy was after that, it stopped there, right? And the market did a very powerful CCRY at the uh, KTR minus one. And it's a BMB, as you know, you see BMB, a CCRY, it triggered P KTR minus one, and also at the same time triggered pivot one. So of course, when you buy, you can just buy here. This is where you can buy already. And of course, if you're going to add position, you can add it when it goes above pivot one. And then the price went up. Now, when the price goes up itself, you know that the KSI on the gold chart is actually red. So you can consider to take partial profit over here. Okay, that's not too bad, KTR plus one. And when the gold came down, you notice that even though it came down, it didn't change color. Then it found some strength again, cross OP again, cross pivot one again. And this time around, it go all the way to KTR plus two. And that is where it stopped there as if that again, the market know that it is there. And after that, what happened? The market went sideways, but the upside has been confirmed. All right, this is the movement for gold this morning. All right, this is very interesting. And again, this shows you that this is why you can see the boys were buying here itself. There was no blue bar at the bottom. So all these tells you that it's very bullish. And if you follow through and do a buy over here, you would have made money. Okay. So if you understand all this, all right, please key number one right now so that I can see how many of you understand what I have just shared on the gold market. And you can see that you just have to follow the system, follow the colors, follow the rules, and you should be able to make money. Now, of course, in between, there will always be long losses. But the losses, as long as you kept within the one bullet size of one bullet size, even you repeat it one or two times, the if the market itself and the time is correct, you manage to make money, your profit will be more than your losses. Okay. So that is why we emphasize on risk management. We also emphasize on the high, uh, low risk, high return. All right. Or risk itself must have more than uh, the risk involved versus the reward must be two to three times so that you can actually make some money out of this. Okay, all right. So thank you guys. Thank you, Angeline, Michael, Susan, Janet, Judy, Karen. All right. Okay, so we go. So let's just look at some global news right now. That's very interesting, local and global news. First of all, uh, for the overseas news very near to us, Chinese property, right? Evergreen faces tremendous pressure. So apparently, this company now, right, is under very, very tremendous pressure. Why is that so? Because they have 300 billion. US dollar in liability, oh my God. Because they went through a very problem through the financial system, the whole economy was down. So they got hit, the stock price created, and of course their bond is going to face default. So the billionaire uh, Hui Kai Yen says that, okay, no worry, everything's okay, but the people are like, huh, are you sure or not? Because now you look at the numbers, right? The total maturity for the US bonds, you can see that as well, right? They need to pay as much as $7.4 billion of maturing bonds next year. Oh my goodness. Now, bonds are basically, uh, in short, like loans uh, from people. So, of course, when you borrow money, you need to pay interest to investors. And don't know about it. Don't, we don't know about just, just the interest alone will actually kill them, right? So, you can see that, right? Just on interest alone, they need to pay up to $669 million US for coupon payment remaining this year. Oh my God. So already this company, the stock price has came down by almost uh, nine, almost from the high, almost 90%. So with all these is that right, it's going to be very difficult for investors to come in unless it's like a bill out from the government. So this is another like a big, big scale problem. And this will actually shake the market. And that's why yesterday Hong Kong market was being shook by this. And of course, this one is something very incredible. Japan, yes, the Japan itself is not an, any YouTuber. He actually came from the Japan embassy itself, okay? confirming that there are warnings uh, for citizens of six different Southeast Asia country. Oh my goodness. All right. So I went to take a look itself and it's no kidding. Everywhere was talking about this. And of course, we are one of them because you see that Japan warns its citizens of possible terrorist attacks in Singapore. Oh my God, this is nuts. So apparently from AP newsletter, all right, there are six countries mentioned by Japan foreign minister. They are 
Indonesia, Philippines, Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, and Myanmar. All right. So the problem is this: the puzzlement is that when the when we well, we sorry, when this some of the countries they went to ask Japan foreign minister, how you get this information? How you know, right? Because because what we don't, the, the, the so-called affected countries, they are not even told. They don't get any information. And the best part is this, the Japan had not reviewed the origin of the warning and just say nothing to it. And they didn't say, you know, proceed to Thailand or whatever, but their name is there. I mean, my point is this is really, really crazy. Lah. And of course, um, there's Malaysia also say that they did not receive any information. There's no security threat. So it's like suddenly out of nowhere, Japan do this thing. I don't know, is it on purpose to create a, a smoke bomb somewhere or you know smoke screen somewhere, but it's just kind of crazy. Then Singapore side didn't reply, we didn't comment back. I think Singapore like, ah, okay, <laughs> like that feeling, very, right, very crazy, right? Okay, so let's look at the consumer price index right now. Now we saw the consumer price in August rose 5.3% and it was from a year ago and 0.3 from July. So apparently it is going higher, but the market said because it's lower than market expectations, so the market should go up. So it's like, huh? Okay. All right. And because they, they strip out food, they strip out energy, the consumer price index only up by 0.1. Wow, like that. Uh. I mean, I know that basically other stuff, 0.1%, nothing much, right? But food and energy is a main, main, most important thing to consumers. If you're telling me that my food price is going higher, my energy price going higher it affects me. Of course, it affects my consumer sentiment, my spending power, and everything. So this is really incredible. So you can see that when the consumer price index came out, right, the Dow Jones futures immediately uptick like this, almost up by 150 points immediately. So we thought that okay, maybe the market just was buy. And then what happened? Then after that, people realized that hey, you know what? You are stripping so much thing away. So actually, the 5.3 annual increment is still at inflation and the hottest level in 13 years. Oh my God, 13 years is still the highest level, my friends. So seriously, after that, it's all right, the market, after we're not right, the, when the cash market opened, instead of going higher, the market took profit. It's as if that they purposely pumping up itself to create the, the, the fuel that the market's going to go up. And then after that, the main boys come in to sell. So it's more like a pump and a dump effect like, on this my hill. And of course, I just add on a little bit, like Steve Henry, you see that this is a flexible price consumer uh, the flexible price, consumer price index, less food and energy. If you look carefully, it's all right. Look at the numbers. We are way, way, way above all the levels since uh, 1970. So seriously, it's all right. This is not transitory. This is absolutely a problem. But of course, again, the market knows it, but everybody seemingly trying to rig out this way. Always. Okay. So UK now decided that, you know what, <clears throat> they decided to really set out their pandemic plan for fall and winter was coming in, and they're going to have their booster shots for pe people that are above 50 years old. So we saw a couple of days ago, Dr. Fauci, the uh, WHO all says that this, this booster shot is, yeah, it's not, it's no need to have it right now, but UK decided that no, 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 we must do it because why? Um, it's going to get into winter period soon and people will stay more at home. And of course, this res respiratory uh, infection will definitely create a bit of problem. And usually this will cause flu, uh, this uh, transmission of flu-like illness. Hence, therefore, they're not going to take the risk. I think that's a pretty good move. But again, we all know that at the moment now, the booster shot, really? Does it really help? Well, we're going to put a quick, quick question mark over there. Now, this is very fun. Pelosi told top general that Trump should be arrested on the spot for inciting the Capitol insurrection. So apparently, right, the U.S. General Mark Milley was uh, told by Nancy Pelosi, the House Speaker, that Donald Trump is a dictator. Now, of course, this is very old news that we all know happened back in January 6th. But what is interesting is this, this uh, Pelosi wrote a book. <laughs> That's why I couldn't get a book. So apparently she says that, right, she actually has a lot of stuff <laughs> wrote inside there. And one of the things highlight, it says that, Donald Trump was wanting to start a nuclear war or launching a military attack in the final days of the office. It was pretty cool, right? And it was a it was a general that actually stopped it from happening. So, so that's why I felt that this book may be quite interesting to read. Okay, so I'm gonna get this book, and I think that right, maybe you can just for fun of it, lah. But you know, this thing has never ended. And uh, based on what I'm seeing right now, with what Biden has done in Afghanistan. Very high chance this gentleman called Donald Trump will come back in again in 2024 election. I'm sure he'll do that. So next year, we'll see his name already in the list already. 
All right, so some important market news and information for your reference. Okay, first of all, hedge fund Dan Nils took Apple from one of his biggest longs to one of his largest short. And this is interesting because you know why? Um, if you remember this, because a couple of months ago, Warren Buffett also did that. Warren Buffett also basically took out cut a bit of profit from his uh, Apple position. Now we know that Warren Buffett don't really sell shares, but of course his, his investment was the, like for Apple, it's almost like half of his entire portfolio. He started to liquefy some profits already. So is it because everybody know that Apple may hit a, a high level soon? So apparently he says that uh, the Apple Epic Games um, court ruling is a big issue because of course now the uh, in-app purchases is no longer available. All right, must give consumer a way to pay for. All right. Then after that itself, we're talking about the iPhone 13. Well, 13, right? Didn't came out as it is by the 5G launch last year. So all of this tells you that people are getting a bit worried and weary about Apple upside. And the recent high was for $156. Yes, yesterday went down to $150. I think close to $148 itself. So this is something that you may want to take note of that Apple. Now, Santoli, one of the market correspondents, says that the option expiration this coming Friday, the Vortex should be actually very well, should be taken note of that. So, of course, we all know that the S&P, the NASDAQ, the Dow Jones is like 2 to 3% away from all-time high. But interestingly, take note, uh, almost at every 19th of the month near expiration, the market will have some rebound. It seems that at the 19th to 20th of the month each time, the market will actually have a bit rebound. Now, I actually have been noticing this for many, many years. 1920 of each month itself, right? Seemingly, there'll be some movement. So you can take a look down, guys. Go back the last few months and see whether every time it's 19 to 20 of the month, what do you actually see? That's an interesting pattern over there. And of course, there are people who are very worried now with the treasury yields. And they also think that, right, this whole CPI data itself is only uh, for some of the sector. Hence, therefore, other places might actually create a bit of problem. And of course, there's some converging on the mood of the portfolio and people getting a bit worried. So overall itself, right, players are all having a bit of jittery right now. And of course, Morton Jeremy Segal says that the stock market is in eighth inning before a correction. Now, eighth inning means one inning away from the final one, and this meant for baseball, okay? So Morton School, Jeremy Segal says that, right, a healthy pullback is expected in the near future. That will allow the bull market to march on. Do not he is a bullish guy, and I think so too. He says that, right, on an, in April, it's the third inning of the boom. That means that he was right because in April, April itself, the market was still at a lower point. Today is higher now, so he was spot on again. And May the 7th, he says at the sixth inning. So he's again spot on. So this guy is pretty good. Eight on eight, eight of April, he says only third inning. Seven of May, he says the sixth inning. And now he says that we're the eighth inning. So which means that there could be a there could be another few more runs after a pullback if we go up again. So he thinks that the market has not over yet. He felt that the market got still got a little bit more movement to go. And this is him himself, wow, versus so many correspondents. And apparently he managed to <laughs> did a pretty decent job. If you want to uh, hear what he say, go to CNBC, key in uh, Jeremy Segal, and then you can see this interview. And of course, he says that even though the Federal Reserve is going to do some tapering later this fall, he expects that you take a breather, then after that, it might recover. And he felt that, right, just that ultimately, the Federal Reserve still need to stand the break, which is pretty true, okay? So this is what he says. And Kevin O'Leary says that maybe it's time to increase. Well, he said that now he's going to increase crypto holding to 7%. So maybe you can consider doing that. And he also bet against airline, which I mean, I mentioned yesterday, airline's counter might be able, might be actually coming down because of all this. So maybe you can follow this Kevin guy and then buy some more crypto to keep us keep on in case uh, you know market swift that. Okay, all right. So this is something interesting before we go to the chart. Sorry to to into the chart sign, but we got time. So this is very interesting. This is from the uh, Bank of America Global Fund Manager Survey, and you can see right now that the people who say that they don't need protection is getting lesser and lesser. And usually, you notice that when people tell you that they don't need protection. The market usually will flip the other way around. So apparently now it's up right in the last time we saw this was December 20th before the market recovers and January 18, January 13, February. So traders, interesting, right? This is a very interesting chart. And of course, I tell you, right, this is something that I cannot understand. Now Dow Jones yesterday dropped so much, Nasdaq dropped so much, S&P dropped so much, but look at the VIX, the VIX hardly actually came down, but it also hardly go up. 
So this tells you that right, there's something that the market may know and they're going to expect a big volatility very, very soon. So that is the reason why I want to tell you that even though the market is down, the, the VIX doesn't mean it had to go, go up. It can behave like this. It's very interesting phenomenal. And I can only tell you that there should be bigger movement coming up soon. Okay. And last but not least, you notice I, I should say again, you can see that every time itself, right? The when during the option expiration, you always see the market will pull back first a little bit. Then once again it hit the moving average, the price usually will rebound. So will this happen again in the next few days? Well, the bet is on and we see what will happen. I'll keep you up posted as we pro proceed to that. Okay, so let's let, let's look at the charts right now. The bull goes move, the bear goes green, and the lemming gold is different this time. Let's look at the market right now. Okay. Okay, here we go. And uh, we can see that China A50 is down again. It's down a little bit. Uh, yesterday was brilliant again. Yesterday it hits the MLP, couldn't go higher, and came back down. Wow, came down. And the moment it hit the MA30, it stays there. So this tells you once again, on the market. Now today, the MA30 is somewhere near here and that's for 15,282. And this is the uh, MLP, which is at 15,428. So all I can say is pretty clear. You can see from the screen right now, if the market fail to stay above MA30, we do expect the China A50 to drop a bit. Okay, we do expect to drop a bit. Thank you, Liu. He says that 10 a.m. we have China news coming up. So we we'll watch out for that at 10 a.m., all right? If uh, to remind me once we are nearer to that. Thank you, Liu. All right, how about Hong Kong right now? Hong Kong this morning has gapped down this morning because obviously the Dow Jones was down overall. So Hang Seng has gapped down this morning. Again, yesterday was brilliant. Yesterday, you know, this is the MA30. Uh, uh, the MA30 is a red color line. Let's do a, bit, a quick recap first before we go to the market. You can see why is that MA30 so powerful yesterday. Now take a look, everybody. You see, yesterday itself, right? Yesterday, yeah. Uh, this is yesterday high. You can see that this is high of yesterday. So MA30 was here. This is a MA30 line. Look at it. The, the Hang Seng went up, right? Touched the MA30 beautifully. And before you know it, it crashed down already. So again, this MA30 is beautiful, it's powerful, and it's really accurate. Really, really accurate. Yesterday we talked about this, and it really to and it really manifested accordingly. That's the reason why. In our uh, version five itself, right, we will be incounting, uh, we'll be putting in together MA30 inside there. I tell you this, it's going to be very, very crazy stuff. And if you actually can follow through, you're going to make a hell of money for the market. It's really incredible. All right, seriously. Yeah, that's why we're always improving to make being better and better for you. We just only want you to benefit out of it. Okay. All right, let's uh, put for today's market right now. For today's MA30 is here. So today's MA30 will be around here at 25,819 level. That is the MA level here. Yeah. Okay. Moment. More messages coming in as usual. Okay, so today the Hang Seng uh, MA30 is kind of far away. So a bit far, so putting in a bit, no point, but that's just right for you. 25,819. Okay, but you can see this is the SL level, right, on the BMB. The market already go below that and now has already triggered the BMB minus one time one. So which means that trader should consider to buy back their position. Traders should consider to buy back their position. So for those who short the market, you can consider to buy back usually because um, when the market hit the minus one time one, usually there will be some form of rebound. Now, of course, I didn't, I didn't say that it will reconfirm rebound, but usually it will happen a bit of rebound over there. That's why you can see the market is hovering around the area here right now. Okay. All right. So that is the conventional. Let's look at the our TWB chart right now. Okay, so for today's TWB chart is pretty interesting. The opening price is actually between the two pivot, but more important things that the KSI is still in green. 
So the opening price of the Hang Seng is between the two pivot, but the KSI is still green now. The one is now red, ignore it first. You don't, you don't, you're not supposed to use it, like it now. So what I'm trying to say right here, right now, is that if the market goes below OP, KTR minus one to KTR minus two, you can consider to buy back your position. Okay, if you are shorting the market because the KSI is still green in color. Now, if the market goes above OP, then it should be able to go to KTR plus one or KTR plus two, rather usually. Okay, so now currently not trading below OP, traders, you just have to follow rules and trade. And those who are doing M1 trading, you just also have to follow rules, okay? And you, later on, we will recap on this for those who are in the Hang Seng group at about 11 a.m., okay? All right, so that's Hang Seng for now. We'll come back to Hang Seng later on. There's nothing much I've moved at the moment. Wait for cash market to open. Let's look at the Dow Jones right now. Now, Dow Jones, we have a BMB, a new BMB. So new BMB means I need to put in the new BMB in. And here we go. Wow, we have a new range right now. A new BMB, new range. So which means that I have to redraw every rewrite everything first just to make sure that we keep ourselves in the we keep it correct. Okay, so what happened is that you notice this. Um, the BMB SL is at 34,505, okay? Only if it goes below 34,505, logically speaking, it will come down to a two different areas. Now, um, by, by definition, it should go down to minus one time one level, and that is about 33,988. But you notice that the MA200 is very nearby, and um, by right, okay, by right, it should be able to come down to the MA200 level and stabilize there. So I draw my second one over here. So um, my view is this, if the market do pull back below 34,505, the market should be able to come down to the MA200. And when that happens itself, right, if you are short in the market, do consider to, you know, buy back some profit. Buy back some first. So this is the very important level, 34,055. 34,055, that will be the, the uh, BMB SL level to watch out for. And if the market pulls back, then it should be able to come down to this point here itself at 34,185 today. Huh? Uh, but still too early to call, so we see how it goes, okay? Now, this is the MLP for today. MLP is 34,755. So as long as the market uh, stays below this point, MLP 34,755, um, the bearishness is still there for today. And if the market goes below OP, then there should be some form of selling. Uh, okay. All right. So that is what we have right now for the uh, for the Dow Jones in terms of conventional. Let's look at the weekly chart. Now, weekly chart, I already given you my personal take on the uh, support at 34,517. I will tell you that um, the uh, the next level you can go is 33,199. So all these, these two levels, I already tell you. So if you just, you forgot, let me just remind you again, 34,517 is a very important technical level that the Dow has a hold. And if the market doesn't hold, it could really bring it down to 33,199. And obviously, if that really happened itself, I would really think that the market should really uh, be a good level to consider to buy back some because it could actually give you a very good entry for buy, okay? For buy, all right? Okay, all right, so that is Hans, uh, the uh, Dow Jones. Let's look at Hang Seng again. I'll look at China A50. China A50 is currently down right now, down a little bit. Uh, Hong Kong is down further. It's, it's down to the technical level at 20, 25,536 below now. Uh, which level, why is it there? Let me see. Is something there? No, it's not, there's nothing here. It should be here. There should be a chocolate bar right here, somewhere here. Uh, yeah. So 25,087, that could be the next level for the Hang Seng going downwards. If like, if it goes down, yep. Okay.
Okay, done deal. So that is that. Let's look at the uh, the itself right now. M5. Okay, very clear. The uh, the Hang Seng didn't even get to uh, move anywhere. No color change. Straight away went down, hit the KTR minus one perfectly and then stop that. Hit the KTR perfectly and stop that as if that they know that KTR KTR minus one exists. And don't forget again, the day chart itself is green color. Hence, therefore, the market, if it comes down to KTR minus one, we do expect it to have some rebound and you can see that it really, really happened. Again, all these are all predetermined. And I can tell you that all these are scripts that we can write it out way before market opens. And if the market really follow through, it's kind of expected and really, it really happened. So it seems that telling us that, hey, you know what, Cal? We know exactly what your system will say and we will be doing for you. Don't you find that really, really amazing? Yes, indeed, then King Hua. Yes, indeed, the market hit KTR minus one. Exactly that what we are uh, expected to happen. Fantastic. So um, anyone trader and make money from Hang Seng? I mean, for M5 trader, you would have traded. La. M1, don't know yet. If those M1, if you have traded, let me know, guys. Oh, this is pretty cool stuff. All right, incredible. Okay, let's look at the NASDAQ right now. The NASDAQ, uh oh we have a problem. NASDAQ, you can see that yesterday, the NASDAQ went up first initially. Then after that, NASDAQ cools down and breaks below the MA30 and now close below MA30. And what is... Even crazier is that today you can see now the MA30 seemingly is forming the resistance for the NASDAQ. It's actually forming the resistance for the NASDAQ. And uh, well, all I can tell you is that if the NASDAQ fail to stay above the MA30, then we should see some selling already. Okay, so uh, MA30 for today is at 15,441. 15,441 is a very important level for the uh, NASDAQ. If the NASDAQ goes below OP, then there'll be some selling down here to about 15,270 mark for the NASDAQ. Now, 95% level is here, which is 14,933. Well, if the NASDAQ can go down there itself, right? It will be a very good time to look to buy instead if the market really hit this 95% mark. Why is that so? Because previously when it hit the 95% mark, the market rebounded from there and not one time, not two times, many, many times. So that is something to watch out again for the NASDAQ, okay? Okay, so that's the NASDAQ. Let's look at the today's chart for NASDAQ, okay? Okay, today's the KSI is still red in color. You can see that that's a very important KSI jump four days ago, and that's why it gives us ample notice of why the NASDAQ will fall. So again, our KSI once again presented itself very well, and it tells you what to do and what you can anticipate from the market. Now for today, the NASDAQ is trying to stay above the pivot one. You can see it's trying to stay above the OP and pivot one. So if the NASDAQ can stay above OP and pivot one, there is a fine chance that the NASDAQ may have a potential of a technical recovery. But if the NASDAQ fail and pulls back below the pivot one and does, can create a CCYR, this could bring the NASDAQ all the way down to pivot two and there's 15,317 level, all right? So traders, you just have to take note of that, huh? okay? NASDAQ. Now, S&P 500, I already tell you the crazy part in S&P, and you can see again, it's beautiful. Yesterday, we have the MA30 at 44.93, and the S&P didn't really touch it, and then come all the way down. But what was incredible is that we mentioned that it's a chocolate bar level at 44.39. Can you see that? At 44.39, this was drawn yesterday. I repeat, this was drawn yesterday at 44.39. And yesterday, the low of the market really hit 44.39, as if that the market knows that 44.39 exists. Don't you remember that? For those who remember that I say 44.39 is S&P level, it's an important level to watch out for this key REM, REM, if you remember that, that I say 44.39 is a very critical level S&P and it will likely be going there. And it may actually, after you touch that, it may actually rebound and it all really happened. All right. For those who remember, you can keep REM. Okay. So what happened is that this is the S&P 
uh, MLP for today, 4464. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you, Fred. Thank you, King Hua. All right, this is really incredible stuff. It was MAO itself is recorded, it's on Facebook. So even to say that I claim it is, I didn't say or I say you will know that uh, you can check it on the Facebook. And of course, you can also uh, notice that my lines are, are there since yesterday. I didn't touch it. So that means if I put it there, means I, have, I, would, I would have talked about that yesterday too. Okay, so what is the next take right now? Well, since 4439 has stabilized, it could be a very important support for SP. So if SP stays at 4439, the SP may rebound. But if the market really goes down, the next level will be 4409. Okay, I'll give you another number for today. The next number that the SP, if really goes down, it may be going to 4409. Okay, another number nine at the back. Okay, that is my view on the SP 500. 44. 09 if the market goes below OP, only if it goes below OP, all right? Okay, so we have S&P 500. Let's look at the S&P uh, chart today. S&P chart is between the two pivot one, pivot two, KSI is red. So if the market stays above OP, the upside will be limited to KTR plus one to most KTR plus two. If the market goes below OP, then KTR minus one will be rather easy. KTR minus two may happen. Let's look out for that, okay? So overall itself, right, we really know what to have look out for for S&P 500, okay? All right, um, I can see that Hang Seng is recovering a little bit. Let's take a look at Hang Seng. Hang Seng is trying its best to recover off from the KTR minus one level, but no cigar yet, no color change, nothing else, but we can see that is firming itself at the KTR minus one as if that the market actually knows what this existence. But do know again, all these KTR are all calculated figures when the market opens. So no one will know exactly where the level are. And really, if all these levels are there by default. So that is how crazy this system is. Okay. All right. So look at DEX right now. DEX, this is DEX. Now, DEX basically has been moving higher the last few days. But uh, I told you that DEX, as long as it stays below the MA30 level, DEX should be still be downwards pressure and indeed it's happening. So today the MA30 is going to be low a little bit to 15,779. And the MLP today will be somewhere near here. And I kind of believe that as long as the market stays below MLP today, next, uh, DEX should be coming down. All right, DEX should be coming down. Let me just look at the DEX uh, chart on the TWB system. Okay, hold on. Huh? Okay. Yes, as I suspected, this is why I think so. You have to be very, very careful. For those who are DEX trader, please be careful. For those who are PTP trade, this is what we call as a higher low formation. When you have a higher low formation and the KSI is red and the more it's like increasing rate, this is not good. So anytime the market breaks down, there should be some form of selling for DEX. So DEX could come down. It could come down to 15,506. And of course, if the DEX come down, Usually you drag down all the US indices at the same time. All right. So traders, please be careful. The market may pull back on the DEX in the near term. Okay. All right. So let's look at the next market, which is Nikkei. Now Nikkei, 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 Nikkei. Now Nikkei yesterday hits the high of 30,700, the technical point that I mentioned. And once it triggered there, you can see that very interestingly, after it triggers there, okay, can I see the full screen? Okay, never mind. When it, okay. When it triggered at the high, you can see that that was where the high was. It triggered two days in a row, couldn't sustain, and then the Nikkei came off. So for Nikkei itself, right, I believe that Nikkei will still come off a bit more for profit taking. Um, I kind of suspect that it may have to come down to touch the 30,000 mark first. That is the uh, uh, milestone level. It will hit around here and then maybe go back up again. So 30,000 is the level that I think that the DK will have to come down before we can see any further upside. 30,010 to be precise. Okay, all right, so that's DK, but overall it's very bullish on DK. It's a golden crossover. Can you see that? It's a golden crossover. And the MA30 and MA200 is so far away. It cannot, it's really pretty clear that, right, the bullishness is very strong on the Nikkei right now. And of course, if you look at the TWB chart on the Nikkei, let's take a look. 
Okay, the Nikkei is still very strong. The KSI is still green, just that the way the formulation itself creates the, the Nikkei have been below P2 for quite a few days already. Now today, the opening price is way away from P2. Hence, therefore, the upside, if you're opening to P2 is in an uncertainty zone, usually we don't do any more trading. Like if you really insist to buy, then just go slow, okay? All right, so that is the Nikkei for you. Let's look at the commodities. Okay, before we go there, give me some water first. Okay, so for gold, we have seen the explosive movement yesterday. Now, I already tell you guys the Nikkei itself, right? That is four, four, four days it'll be touching the MA30. And I told you that <clears throat> very soon an explosive movement will be coming in, all right? And it really happened yesterday. Now, the explosive was even credible. It was a BMB at the same time. So what happened is that you can see the market broke below ML MLP first yesterday. Then once it recovers back above MLP, it shoot up and create a new BMB. And it went above the MA30, which is at 1706. So let's just do a quick recap on what happened yesterday. Okay, so yesterday you can see this is gold. So gold basically was hovering at MLP as if that gold actually no MLP exists. Can you see that? It holds at MLP very nicely. Then it went up. Then after that it went up, it U-turned, come down, broke MLP, sell down all the way. Okay, so fair. But at the bottom of the chart, it was a BMB, right? Remember it's a BMB. And when it crossed back itself, it crossed the MLP first. Then after that it crosses the MA30 at 1796. So I told you, right, if the if gold can stay above 1796, gold will go higher to meet the MA200. And that's 1802. And you can see it really, really happened according to what we have said yesterday. Really, yesterday, remember, we have said that the gold will behave like this. If the gold hit this point, where will it go and stuff like that? Do you remember? Right, if you remember, can you key the word go spot on? Okay, if you think that you can give me a bit of uh, validation on this, that you know that I was perfect on this on the go chart. I know that uh, where we be going and stuff like that. You think that I did a decent job? Please key the word go spot on. Okay, I will be using it for marketing, of course, but I want you to give me some very uh, validation on this. Okay, Ken? Yeah, thank you very much for those who have done that. Thank you, Anthony. Really appreciate that. Anybody else you want to give it to me some validation? <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you again, Fred. Thank you so much. Okay, so for today, uh, let us be, be very objective. The MA200 seemingly is the same because MA200 is a very big, it's a long-term trend line. So it won't like change immediately so much. MA30 has some movement already. The, the level now is about 1798, okay? MLP for today is somewhere near here, very near to the MA30. Okay, thank you, Janet. Thank you, David. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Kinghua. Thank you, Fred. Thank you, Angeline. Thank you, Susan. Toming, Anthony. Okay, thank you, guys. Thank you so much again. Okay, so for those people who wrote <clears throat> Go Spot On, after uh, be after before Janet, okay, all of you will receive, okay, you will all receive 3.8 ADA coin. Yay! That means that people like Janet, okay, onwards, huh? Janet, I put a love button around beside you. All these people who have the love icon right now will receive 3.8 ADA coin from TWB Academy, yay, see? So you actually stay on with us, you can actually get some stuff here as well, okay? If you like what we just gave up, all right, okay, let me know if you're happy with it, okay? <laughs> okay, all right, those who, uh, who have a love shape, you get the 3.8 ADA coin, all right? So Susan will contact you later, 3.8, okay? Okay? No problem, guys, because you guys support us, we know it, okay? And we when you we, we feel it, it's all right, we're gonna give you something in return. All right, end of the day is that obviously we did make some money from gold yesterday. And of course we want to give you back. It's always like this, you see. So of course, if you very fit, you validate us, you really like us and you know, uh, Akel, you're really serious. You really, 
you know, really tell us truth and you really follow through. Yeah, I think that's the most important thing. Yeah, of course, Susan, you'll get some too. Of course, Susan. Okay, so what today, what will be the level now for watch out for? Now, today is a, it's above MA200. So as long as goals can stay above MA200 at 1802, it will be critical and important. So we don't want to be like a one-time affair. Hopefully, it stays there. If it stays above the 1802 and goes above OP, right? Today, goal can go higher. Right? It can go higher. Okay? So uh, the upside potential can be all the way here itself. And that, what level is that? Uh, let's double check on the, the chocolate bar. This level is... Hold on, uh, 1823. 1823. So it's again the weekly chart, very important technical point. 1820, right? 1823. Okay, so I'm going to write it down. Okay. Did I miss out Fred? Oh, sorry, Fred. Did I miss you? No, uh, I didn't miss out. Uh. Fred have a love shape uh, over there. <laughs> yeah, Fred, you have the love shape right beside your name. Because on my, on my screen, I see that. Uh, but I don't know whether sometimes this Facebook thingy may be missed up. But don't worry. We will not miss you anyway. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes I like that. Uh, sometimes. Okay. Um, okay. So, go. Okay. Go. Um, MA200. Estimate price is 1802. Then uh, this uh, MLP, yeah, uh, sometimes don't have one. It doesn't show, not every time will show. No worry on that. Yeah, I saw my site show, it's more important. Yeah, it does happen. I, I, I observed this quite a, bit, a few times already. Okay, don't worry, Fred, drive slowly. Huh? Okay. Now, MA200 is 1802, MLP is 1799, very near to the MA30, 1798. So, gold has to stay above OP for buying today. I repeat, for you to be safe to buy gold, <clears throat> gold has to be above OP. If gold stays below OP, there's no reason to be buying gold. All right. Are we clear with that? This is very, very, very open. Huh? Must Stay above OP to buy gold today. It has to be above OP, if not dangerous. Okay, all right. I already given you my view. I'm stamp already. Okay, huh? Okay, now the goal has came down nicely, missed my technical point, but good enough for me. And I look at the goal right now. So if goal can stay above, well, this is a good buy. Okay, this is what I want to see in a technical chart. Okay, I like this type of movement. Okay, I said this before one week ago and really it's manifesting accordingly. All right, remember that? Yeah, okay. So let's look at goal for today, today's goal. Oh, interesting for goal today. Today is the CCRY on goal and the BMB some more. Wow. Okay, interesting. So those in the 3G group and SNG group stand by for a buy call. Huh? <laughs> okay, so what happened is that this is a CCRY on goal yesterday, but it's not as good because the KSI is red, blue bars are there. So this buy is all right, may see some initial resistance, okay? This buy may see some initial resistance. But if the goal can stabilize itself, they should be able to go higher. And this high should be able to go to 1823 level, 1823, okay? So upside is 1823 for gold. For those who are, who are interested to buy some gold today, consider, because you know why? If you take notice this, okay? This is a previous entry, right? This is a previous entry. This is the today's entry. So this entry is higher than the previous entry. So this actually is a very good buy signal, okay? This is a very good buy signal. If gold can stabilize above OP, today gold is a good buy, okay? Ken, all right, take note of that, huh? okay? This is the higher buy because this is the previous entry. This is the today's entry, okay? So this is very, very important, a good buy, okay? A good buy 
itself. Okay, yeah. So traders don't don't miss out this great opportunity to make some money. But of course, they know the KSI is red, so the upside initially will be a bit a bit of resistant. Okay, there will be a bit of resistance there. So let me ask how many of you know no this has got no ADA coin, but how many of you will be buying gold today? If you're going to buy gold today, please key the word gold G O L D. If you are going to buy gold today, all right, let me know. All right, and someone gold today is above pivot one, correct, King Hua? Today, gold is also above pivot one. So all these are very good buys. It's a classic buy on gold if it goes above OP. So let me know how many of you are going to buy gold today. If you're going to buy gold, please key the word gold. Okay, let me know that if you're going to buy gold today. All right, definitely today I'll be looking to buy some gold because I did mention that if it goes above the, uh, if the, the next CCRY setup is actually higher than the, uh, the previous one is a very good sign to buy some gold. Okay, so let me see how many of you are going to buy some gold today. Okay, all right, but it has to go above OP and also do yourself a favor. Please make sure your risk management is well in place. Huh? You don't just enter and just buy gold without knowing your risk management. You need to know where's your downside risk. You know, to, you need to know exactly what is your uh, risk involved involved in the market. All these things must be in place before you get into it. Okay, all right. So let me see how many of you will be buying gold. Angeline, David, oops. Toming, King Hua, Anthony, Michael, Susan. Okay. All right, all oh, we're buying gold. Okay, cool. Let's call a couple of you guys. Let's see whether y'all make money. Okay. Tomorrow, uh, we see how it goes. Okay. Janet also, yeah. Okay, so we've done the gold analysis. Let's look at the crude oil, uh, sorry, uh, silver. Okay, mean oil silver and my gold. Huh? Okay, good. Okay, this is silver. Now, silver has stabilized around this area at $23.38, but it's still hampered down by the MA30. But uh, if gold goes up and silver follow through, silver you can also buy some to keep, all right? Some silver to keep. So for today, my objective is pretty clear. If gold goes up, then I may buy some silver also on the side, okay? I may do that. So I'll let Susan update you guys some silver trade later on in the uh, through the gold group chat. We're going to put silver together, all right? Okay, so that is silver for you. Let's look at crude oil. Very nice. I see crude oil today is a uh, doji. Uh, again, although the Dow Jones yesterday came down, okay, this is a, this is you can see that this is a crude oil MLP, right? If we do a bit of recap of yesterday crude oil, you can see again the the recap is beautiful. Is that yesterday uh, the crude oil came down, hit the MLP, stopped there, recover, went up again. So again, this show you the MLP and gold is pretty good, and. Uh, in oil, sorry. So MLP for today will be somewhere here. Okay, somewhere here, and it's it seemingly is supported, and it's above MA thirty, and it's above MA two hundred. So it's very bullish. So I'm gonna be very confident to say that unless it's a big profit taking view to the inventories today, if not, there's a good chance that crude oil should be able to touch seventy one dollars and ninety two cents today. All right, I repeat myself, there's a good chance that crude oil could be going towards this uh, $71.92 today if the inventories are favorable, right? Okay, so that is the conventional. And if you look at this, uh, oh, sorry. Okay, we look at this uh, oil on the TWB chart, beautiful. KSI all the way green between the two pivots. So as long as crude oil stays above OP today, as long as it stays above OP today, it should be able to go up to $71.40, which is very near to my target earlier. I mentioned as well, it should go to the uh, next uh, level, which is, uh, sorry, I just say <laughs> memory block down there. Something came in my mind. Yeah, you can see that the same, the the target for the BNB level, right? Okay, some the things are not refreshing properly. Yeah, seventy one ninety two is a one time one level, and uh, this level is something right nearby to our 
7140 level. So let's pivot one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What was what came to my mind? I forgot to tell you about the goal. Hold on a minute. Eh? Now, goal is a BMB, right? Goal is a BMB. So naturally, it will have its one time one also. Yeah. That's why I have my. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Okay. Yeah. There's something not shown here. Wait. Here we go. Here we go. So if goal is a go up, right? You notice that the goal, if it's go up, it will hit the one time one and it will be the high. Okay, let's compress it down a bit. The high itself, I mean, the target itself is 1835. And that coincides very nicely with 1836, which is 38.2. That's why my, my brain is telling me something that I need to share with you, but I just couldn't relate what is it because, of course, I didn't see the BMB calculation, right? But something just tingled to me and said, hey, you know what? There's something there. And now I look at it, wow, the 1835 and 1836, the, the one time one and the, the Fibonacci 38.2 is together. Same number here itself. All right, at 1835 to 36 level. Oh my goodness. So that means that if let's say, if seriously the market is going to go up, right, it will go to that level. It will go there. So that means there's a lot of money to be made from gold if it really, really goes up. Because it's like now, Today is like 1803 right now, right? If it goes up, right? Wow, it's $30 upside potential, okay? $30. So of course, it may not be one, it will not happen a single day, but again, anything can happen. So just traders, just consider that, okay? Put a TP down there and let the market decide, okay? 1835 range, all right? Crazy, all right? Cool? Yeah, indeed, huh? pretty cool, right? I, I, I didn't prepare this, really. I didn't prepare all my MAOs in the morning other than the fundamental news I had to prepare. The rest itself, technical, I don't prepare at all. And also, I don't want it to like, you know, have a brief predetermined thingy in my mind already. I don't want to have that. All right, so let's just quick look at Bitcoin now. Bitcoin today, yesterday, interesting, it rebounded. Uh, KSI turned green, blue bars retreating. So it seems to be the home buying at the moment now. Today, Bitcoin is um, trading at about 47,000 right now. 47,068 is the pivot one level. It has to cross. To go higher now, if it does that, Bitcoin can go back up to 51,000. It is possible. All right, now KSI has already turned green color and blue box is retreating, so there is a small potential, small upside. Now, I rather buy Bitcoin when it comes down close near the low than I buy, I prefer that. So, chasing trade itself, right? I just want to do small if you really want to do that, okay? But stay, but of course, make sure that it's. Of, is able to cross pivot one nicely. Or not, if not itself, there will be some resistance at the moment. Okay, so that is uh, Bitcoin. Let's look at the Ethereum to wrap it up. Now, Ethereum. Okay, hey, hold on, stop moving. Okay, so for Ethereum itself, right, the KSI is still red. Okay, the KSI is still red, very different from what you saw in Bitcoin. The KSI is still red, the blue bars are still there. So the upside potential should be kind of like blocked by this guy, 33 to 87. I believe that it's going to probably going to stabilize there for a while. But of course, if Bitcoin goes up, Ethereum will follow. So it's pretty hard, tough to call, but I'd rather give a miss. I'd rather if you're going to buy something like cryptocurrency, I'd rather focus on buying. Uh, this uh, Bitcoin over Ethereum because Ethereum KSI now is red in color. So I don't want to chase after this. Okay, you got it? Yeah? Okay, so that will be all for today's MAO. I cleared off everything. I, I already told you today, my emphasis more on gold today. If gold can stay above OP, it could be a very good buy. And of course, it can go all the way to 1836. All right. Thank you once again, guys, for those who got the who who we who walk, who so-called walk away with the ADA coin. Congratulations to you. So tell your friends that actually coming on MEO is uh, not only that they'll benefit from the calls and the sharing, they also may be able to get some prizes once, once in a while. All right. So once again, thank you guys. Have a great day. This is Cal signing off. Bye-bye.